Bien, euh, mesdames et messieurs, euh, bonjour, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello, welcome. Thank you uh, for being here today for the third conference, uh, the third conference of the day of this European Fair, uh, Study and Work in Europe. Uh, the idea of this whole day was in the frame of the French presidency of the Council of the European Union to have some um, possibility for all the, the Thai students, but not only the Thai students, also international students in Bangkok, to gather information about studying in Europe. Uh, we had this the first conference this morning about all the different programs that uh, uh, you can follow to, uh, to study in Europe. The second conference was the uh, 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 sharing experience with alumni who have been uh, studying uh, in, uh, in Europe in countries such as uh, Czech Republic, uh, Sweden, uh, Finland, Belgium, France. And uh, this third conference uh, is all about career opportunities and the uh, uh, professional and economical world because it's also important when you start to study uh, in a specific field like to project yourself in what's next uh, what will be the, uh, the, the, the the work field I could be working in and this is why it's important also to have the experience of people who are already having a professional activity in uh, in different fields. I would like to thank them all for being here today and uh, especially uh, Justine de Guerre who will be uh, um, moderating this uh, event, Justine de Guerre is the uh, executive director of the uh, Franco-Thai Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we're having uh, today uh, also Mrs. Uh, Ploy Platbin uh, Yito, who is the country HR lead of Bayer Thailand, Myanmar and Cambodia. Thank you so much for being here. We're having Mr. Stefan Psota, who is the commercial attaché of the Austrian Embassy at the commercial section. Uh, we're having uh, Mr. Patrice uh, Pichetta, uh, from uh, ACOM Group and President of the Franco Thai Chamber of Commerce, and uh, Mr. Sutishai Sriawan, uh, General Director of Solvay Peroxide Vietnam. Thank you all for your presence today. Thank you for the audience online for following us. This conference is being recorded and broadcasted live on Facebook. You will have the chance to watch it again or to uh, forward it to your friends if they want to know more about uh, this topic, uh, have a very nice conference. Merci Justine, c'est à toi. Sawadika, everybody, and uh, hello. So my name is uh, Justine de Guerre, and I think you will uh, understand very quickly from my accent where I'm from. Uh, and I'm leading the franco thai Chamber of Commerce, so of course I'm, I'm French. Very happy to be with you uh, this afternoon and to moderate this, uh, this panel. I think it's a very uh, interesting discussion to have on uh, why uh, should you have maybe a career in Europe or what would be for you the interest of working for European company. I think you have here uh, a, a panel of uh, uh, speakers that is very interesting because you have uh, uh, Thai persons that are working for European companies. You have uh, f uh, European uh, people working for business and that have a vision uh, or that are employing uh, Thai uh, employees in Thailand. So all this testimony will be very complimentary for you to have uh, this vision. But so let's not take too much time. We have a lot of uh, questions. And of course, at the end of this panel, we will take time uh, to take your questions. Uh, the idea is also to make this session interactive and so that you can ask uh, your, your specific uh, questions. Um, so maybe to begin with, uh, maybe let's uh, let's uh, understand who are your s our speakers and who they are. So I will start with you, uh, uh, Kuna. Fly, if you can uh, present yourself and introduce your your company. Thank you. Yeah. Good um, afternoon, everyone. Sawadina My name is Poi Top Team, and actually you can call me as a short name as Poi. Yeah. I'm the country HR lead of Bayer Company. Bayer is a multinational company from Germany, and we have um, our head office in Leverkusen, Germany. Um, in total, we have um, office located in um, 83 countries worldwide, and we have um, 99,000 employees across all the country. Yeah. Um, in terms of the business, we have um, three main business groups, which we call divisions. We have um, the business in consumer health, you, you guys might be um, a customer of our company like um, Wapek, Sandbox, yeah, Viroka, yeah, and uh, another business group is the pharmaceutical company, which we uh, focus on the eye care and cardiologies and also general medicine. And the last one is the uh, science, 
which we developed the digital farm yeah, to support the farmer worldwide. Yeah. Thank you very much. Kun Suti, can you introduce yourself as well? Yes. Okay. So uh, I am Suti Chai. Swadikap, Suti Chai. Uh, for English people, you can call me Suti. Maybe easier. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have an engineering degree from Thailand. And I have a Master of Business Administrative from UK. I worked for Solvay for 25 years. And in Solvay, uh, what we are doing, uh, we, are, we invent, we produce the specialty polymers and the chemicals. Specialty polymers we use in the light vehicle, in the airplane, in the car, uh, in the battery. Uh, in even in the electronic devices, your mobile, we have our product inside. The others, we have a chemicals, uh, the all chemical link into home and personal cares, at your home, in your food, in your packaging, even in disinfectants that you have with today. So this is quickly about solvent. Thank you very much, Kun Suti. Kun Stefan, maybe can you introduce yourself? Of course, thank you. Uh, my name is Stefan Psota. I'm the commercial attaché for the Austrian Embassy commercial section here. Austrian Embassy commercial section, um, I said it to you before, Justin, is a, um, a slight dual hat that we have on. We also call it Vantage Austria, where we do the trade promotion on behalf of the Austrian government um, in Thailand. And we are responsible as such for Thailand, Myanmar, Cambodia, and Leon. Actually, it just came back from a mission to Thailand and to Cambodia. Um, we, as an organization of Advantage Austria, so only the commercial sections of the embassy, have about 70, we are represented in 70 different countries with in total 100 offices, and we employ 750 staff. Of that is about 150 to 200 Austrian staff, which are sent as diplomats from Austria to the countries where they are stationed, and the rest of that is local staff. I, in my position, I'm the deputy head of our office, but I'm the main person responsible for recruiting. I'm the main person responsible for selecting staff and then for onboarding the staff. So as, as a result, I have got a very good idea about what is necessary that we want to employ um, local Thai staff and what skills you need to have to work in an embassy environment here in Thailand. Thank you very much. Um, now, Patrice, can you finish and introduce? Yeah, I'm Norikap um, Tukon. Hello, everybody. So my name is Patrice. For Thai people, it's usually Patrick. It's much easier. Um, I'm the CEO for Asia at Acoem. Acoem is a French headquarter company, what do you call medium-sized company, 850 people worldwide. Our main activities are in environmental monitoring. So uh, environmental monitoring is air, noise, and vibration monitoring. So you see the data that you have on your Air BKK or uh, Air for Thai app are usually coming from us, so the PM10, PM2.5 uh, data you are reading are coming very often from our devices. Uh, we also control emission for factories, so we control what they emit in terms of CO, CO2. And we have a, a whole industrial reliability branch where we control the health, not of people, but of machines, to make sure they produce properly and with less energy and less breakdown, uh, what you call condition monitoring uh, system. Um, I've been in Asia for 22 years, 12 years in Bangkok. Um, from Thailand, we manage the world Asia for uh, our group. So, um, of course, uh, I know very well Thailand, but uh, we've been traveling uh, all around Asia. So, we have a very good, we chose Thailand to be our headquarters for good reasons, that I can elaborate later. But it was a perfect uh, combination of talents, uh, uh, logistics, and, uh, and uh, quality of life as well for people. Uh, to uh, to manage Asia, and I'm also the president of Franco Thai Chamber of Commerce, where we manage the bilateral relationship uh, between French and Thai companies. We have about 250 members, uh, French and Thai, and not only French and Thai, European companies as well. And Justine is our executive director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Patrice. And maybe just to give uh, an overall uh, view, maybe you 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 know about it, and it has been discussed in the previous panels. But you know. Europe is the fourth uh, trade partner of Thailand, and uh, they are bilateral trade uh, for 29 billion of euro. Uh, more, uh, it was in 2020, so the, the amount of trade in between our countries is uh, very important. 
So maybe now let's be straight to the point. I will start with you, maybe Code Floy, as you are a Thai woman and also a, a HR manager. Huh? So it means you are in charge of the, 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 the recruitment in a European company. Can you share with us what do you think is a, uh, maybe uh, the um, what do you think is different or maybe interesting uh, of uh, working for a European company? Yeah, actually, I have an experience in working with um, other company in under nationality before. Yeah, but the thing is quite different between European is that um, when I first joined and working with them, um, I have a more experience in terms of the diverse working environments and experience. Yeah. They are more welcome in terms of the different nationality. We are very openly be able to share our, our opinion and well discussion on what would be the good decision. And not just only the internal opportunity of the diverse and opportunity that is available. Um, they also promote a kind of the international experience for us to have more exposure and um, learn more about the different way of working, different culture that we will be able to benefit and add value to the organization. Okay, very interesting to have a free yeah. opinion, have a career internationally. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Maybe Kunsuti, can I, can I ask you also the, the same question? What could you, do you think would be attractive aspects uh, to Thai candidates, candidates to work for, for a European company from, from your experience? Oh, good question. So uh, I would recommend you like this. Um, you're already good. But what you have to do is enhance yourself to be how to work. Uh, I will give you a detail. So when I talk like this, it means that you know about what you know, but how you show it. So you have to involve yourself, engage yourself, be entrepreneur in your roles and your responsibility. When you do this, you will be expert on your work. When you are there, no one can compete you. This is what I, I would okay. like to recommend. Sorry, and so, um, and you, Kun Stefan, do, do you want to complete on uh, career opportunities and positive as aspect of working in, in Europe, uh, European company, or as you said before, for European embassies or yeah. diplomacy? Yeah, of course. Um, so if, if we want to be honest, if we want to be frank, I mean, it builds your CV. Undoubtedly, it's, it's one of the main things it, it does wherever you want to go next. Uh, when I look at candidates, so we've recruited recently, we've recruited two new people, and both of them actually have had a, a past with a British Trade Promotion Agency or with the British Embassy. And uh, to me, that showed that they know how to work in the Western environment. You know, I understood that thereby they have experience of a number of years already that is uh, giving them the, the understanding and the cultural awareness of what it means to work in this kind of environment. What does it mean to deliver? What does it mean? What are your targets? And also, how do you communicate? And I think all of that, of course, is a great advantage. And to, just to give that example now, the big difference here between a European um, or a Western company, could be American as well, really, um, and a, let's say, in the Asian sphere, and the Eastern sphere in, in general, maybe let's include Singapore slightly here, uh, there's a different way of communicating and a different cultural understanding. If you have experience in China before, if you have experience in Japan before, the cultural similarities are very little with working in a Western company. So I think that's really what it gives you. And you need to have that experience. Either have it, do it in Europe, do it in the Western world, whether it be North America, um, or, or, or do it here in those kind of companies. Because otherwise, I think it's hard to understand how to work together as a team, how to communicate, how to carry responsibility. And I think that's what it really gives you. It builds your CV for the next endeavors where you're going to. Okay, thank you, interesting. And so, uh, Patrice, you want to complete because you're also an employer, a French employer, so what do you promote to um, your candidates? Yeah, I, w um, I will go directly in the direction of Stefan. I think um, Thai employees, um, we need to go to work in Europe or for European, com European companies have to um, forget a little bit about the cultural background and go for cross-cultural training. You know, we have an um, aspect in Thai like Krenjai Haikiat, which are not understood very often by European managers, which we also need to train to understand the Thai culture, obviously. But I mean that you have to be able to give your opinion, to say you don't agree, to, um, to argue that, to give 
the reason why you think it will be better to do it another way, even if the person in front of you is your boss or your N plus two, is it very important to be able to comprehend that, to be able to work in this environment. So you can get that from working in Europe. You can get that also a little bit prepared here by cross-cultural training, but that's very important. But one point that you, 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 you mentioned, Justine, was the positive part of working in Europe. So that is one, being able to give your opinion and to be able to, to work in that. But also as an employee, and uh, we have to be uh, thinking about the employee itself, you have a lot of positive benefits as an European employees when you work in a company in France, Australia, whatever. And I think about medical insurance, unemployment, retirement, that you don't even understand if you work from here because they are for everyone and for everybody. So there are a lot of positive aspects you have to consider in working in Europe. Okay, interesting. So now we see that there are a lot of benefits, multicultural experience, um, having an international, uh, having a new way to, uh, how to say, development, uh, self-development and ho know how to uh, behave in meeting a new uh, culture of, uh, of company. An entrepreneur, uh, have an entrepreneur pass also. So all, th all those are benefits. But now let's, let's discuss on, the, on um, uh, what, uh, how could be that, uh, that experience, how could that happen? Maybe, um, Kun Suti, I want also to have your, your feedback on your experience. You have uh, been expatriated yourself, I think, three times. Uh, maybe you will share with, uh, with us in Belgium and, if I remember well, in Sweden France. and yeah. France also. Yeah. So maybe can you, can you share with us how, how was it for you? How did you like working uh, directly in those countries? Okay. So uh, I will go back in the, in the years of, uh, uh, it's almost 20 years already, 2003. Uh, in that moment, I was given an opportunity. Uh, shall I go to work in Belgium? This is 20 years ago. You know that in that moment, internet is still not uh, so abundant. Uh, you cannot have uh, easy to contact with your family. This question uh, I took along many days, few weeks even, to think, what shall I do? After I talked with my family, I said, why not? Let's try, okay? And you know that in that moment, uh, it's not easy. When you move from one country to another country, you have to learn many things. Uh, you have a different language, how you can communicate, what you want, about culture, how can you work correctly? Is that the way that the people think, or I have to change? How to work with my friends? And we have nobody. We have just our family. Not easy, all right? So in the first day, how can we continue? At the end, just one thing. We have to accept it. Accept it. Embrace it. And look what we can do. After that, you will see how to do, how to develop. And after that, you are involved with ending we like it, we enjoy it. And since then, we have solo move, I would say, it's coming after. From Belgium, go to France, France to China. China, come back to Thailand. Thailand, back to Belgium. Belgium to Vietnam. So at the end, we ending up by, we, we love it. So you just accept the change and go with them. Okay, explore, learn. I think you will like it. Yeah. That is what I can So say. accept it, embrace it, and then you will love it. So that, <laughs> that's a good thing for international experience. Yeah. So now com coming to, to maybe straight points on how, how to, to reach those uh, European uh, careers or European uh, uh, companies. Maybe Kun Ploy, uh, as you are a human resources uh, manager, maybe uh, you, you can tell us what type of profiles you are working, uh, you are recruiting for buyer. And what are maybe the hard and soft skills you are you are looking for? Yeah, actually, um, when we uh, I think most of the company when we looking for the people, right? We would uh, would like to some looking for someone that have the competencies and skill to perform that role well, right? But as nowadays, based on the worker world and a, ch a lot of the change that happening, when most of the company are recruiting or looking for someone, we won't look for someone just only for that role. 
but we are looking for someone who be able to perform, develop, and grow with the company. This means that we are looking for someone who in the future be able to perform the next role or be on the assignment to perform another role as well. Yeah. So this, in general, this is what all the company would love to see in the candidate. But if we would like to go more into detail in terms of making things simple and easier for understanding, uh, I will not talk about the basic thing like a leadership, mindset, or learning agility that all of us will know. But I will pick um, around three or four key areas that I think is very important. And what company is looking for is the first thing. We would like the employee to have the adaptative, right? Because a lot of shares happening, and we would like someone who be able to be in the diverse experience, adopt and adapt to match with the situation, and be able to deliver the result, right? Secondly, we also would like to have someone that is flexible. Because currently, a lot of things of thing is keep changing. Right, someone who be flexible to adjust themselves to match the situation and the limitations of the condition, that would be very benefit to themselves and the people around them, including the organization. The third one is resilience, is ability to recover quickly, right, when challenging with the kind of the difficulties or some um, concern that may happen. So if you be able to recover uh, quickly, it means that you'll be able to start up and walk or even run faster than others. And the last one is about the ability to deal with ambiguities. Because we all know that in the digital world, in the world of that everyone needs to move very fast, we need to deal a lot with the uncertainty. So if you have the ability to step up dealing with the thing that you might not know before, that would be benefit to yourself as well and the company. So all of these things will help to support even the employee themselves or the organization to move faster. And they will call that this skill will support for the agile organization. Okay, very interesting. So somehow resilient candidates that are able to be flexible and to adapt, I think also in a lot of companies with the COVID situation, people have been looking for, for that. Yeah. Uh, Patrice, do you, do you want to, to complete what are the French companies, because as also the, the president of, of the Franco Thai Chamber, what are the French companies telling you about uh, skills that they are looking for, profiles that they are looking for? Absolutely. Um, well, I took note because there are so many skills we are looking for that <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a long list. But uh, um, first, I will start by one indicator, which is very important. In France, uh, we have now more job offers than we are before COVID. So we did not only recover, we are looking for talents. And it's very difficult to find them. All the French company we work with tell us the difficulties to recruit and to find people. And the uh, employees, have the candidates, have often very quite a lot of offers. So the salaries are going up as well. Because when you have several offers, well, you choose the best. So uh, the salaries for new employees are going up. So if you look at um, what uh, is, where the market is very dynamic now, uh, obviously, well, I'm, I'm going to use a French word, tarte à la crème, which means they are very common things that everybody should know, but digital transformation, first one, digital transformation englobes IT, englobes sales and marketing, englobes all parts of the company. So it can be purely in IT, like data analysts, front and the back end the developers. Um, um, it can be also in the, in the field of uh, CSR, of uh, BCG in Thailand, that we call a biocircular economy. So we are looking a lot of people that, but not only that, um, we also are missing a lot of people in, in um, hospitality and food business. That's really difficult to find now, and that's something easy to study from Thailand with French and European companies here and to be to find employment there. Um, now, if uh, we look at the, the qualities of Thai candidates, um, just before I say forget a bit about the culture, but don't forget everything. Team spirit, kindness, uh, interpersonal skills are a huge asset for Thai people working in Europe. 
they are not that they are embedded in you and you can easily use them in a in a daily uh, in a daily uh, you know daily work life um, so um, and just to finish I will also focus a little bit on the the buy, the buy of multicultural candidates um, we have a probably a lot in the room whether it be French Belgium uh, Luxembourg Austria or whatever um, these are really sought after simply because they are all are trilingual w even quadrilingual because they will speak Thai but they will speak uh, the native language English and maybe one more language learn at school they are very adaptive agile like you mentioned Kunploi because they are bicultural so or sometimes they even live in two three four five countries over like your kids probably <laughs> uh, over their over their, their childhood and these are huge quality qualities for European and French company when they want to recruit people knowing that they'll be able to work anywhere in Europe in the world and they will be comfortable doing it it will not be a drama to move from your country to another one because they are used to it okay thank you so I, I I think it's a good news. You have seen there, there is a positive news. There are a lot of sectors of activities uh, where there are recruitment on the process. I would add also the industrial sector. Uh, there are a lot of engineers, a lot of French uh, companies here, and I think also European companies in general. Uh, as uh, uh, Thailand, uh, Industry 4.0, as you know, is a big uh, development asset of the, the country, a uh, developing industrial sector. So I know there is a lot of... Uh, engineers that will be uh, recruited in the coming year, so I would add this sector also. And um, yes, I think you're right, uh, Patrice, in the, in the skills that are very much appreciated by European companies uh, on Thai uh, profiles, uh, uh, kindness, uh, and uh, all those uh, soft skills that are very, very strong. And I think, as, uh, as you say, international path is always a plus uh, when you want after to, to be a candidate. Uh, Stefan, do you confirm that? And in the profiles you, you are recruiting for for embassy, um, what would you advise for people willing to have international career? What would it would help you to, to identify uh, maybe a type uh, a candidate uh, to, to be a good candidate for an international career? Um, yeah, I think that I think that's a very important question here, and it's a question that some people should ask themselves: What does the interview process look like for the employer? So because that really made a difference for me when I realized that uh, we have limited amount of time that we look at those CVs and then we have an hour with you when we have the interview, maybe a slightly bit before when there's like a testing scenario or something like this. In this hour, you got to show yourself and you got to show who you are also because we make a judgment on character and the better a person is at presenting themselves in that situation, the more likely is you get hired. And for that, I think soft skills should really come in Show yourself as the person you are, as the interest that you have, and make them relate with your work. You know, If you are someone who is very sporty, for example, who plays a team sport, or he's very driven because they're doing Muay Thai here or something like this, you know, use that as part of who you are to show why you're driven, to show why you go the extra mile, and you stay later on a Thursday evening to make sure that the event on the Friday is going to happen uh, in the right way. Um, and those kind of things we really look for, and we try to identify when we look through the CVs. I think that's something that um, should be taken into account. Think what the employer sees in you, and use that time when you have in the um, when you have the interview to really present all of what you are, not just your education and your experience, but who you are as a person, because you become a member of the team, and we look for someone who is a team player, and I think that should really come across. Okay, interesting. So I hope you have well heard. Huh? If you are looking for a position at the Austrian embassy, <laughs> Stefan looks uh, to be sensitive to sports uh, experience, so <laughs> you will mention that. Huh? Sadly, uh, we're not hiring at the moment <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but, uh, well, we'll, we'll be in the future again, probably. <laughs> okay, okay, good, uh, good, good to know. Uh, Kunploi, so uh, I think we have here in this room maybe a student uh, that are in the path of uh, choosing uh, uh, which studies they, they, they want to do in the, in, in the future. So what would you recommend to them? Uh, maybe it's difficult to tell them to pick one or the other sector, but on the other side of experience, what, what would you advise? Actually, if uh, we are talking about the hot job in the market at this moment, it will be um, the job relating to the digitalizations, like uh, digital marketing, um, uh, data scientists, um, software engineer. That would be the common role that uh, all the company move forward in uh, having a high demanding in the market and it's really shortage. Not many people that have this kind of the experience and the educational background 
But um, if you're asking me whether what would be the appropriate career path, I think it's very based on individual. So I think the first thing is you have to know yourself first in your mind that what is um, your interest and what is your long-term expectation toward your life, right? Sometimes um, as a student, we ha doesn't have much exposure. But um, I think there is no right or wrong. Try it first and you learn it along the way and you will know yourself better. And there is nothing can pull you back when you want to start up again and learn the new thing to add value into your life. So my recommendation is look back, do the self-assessment, create the self-awareness, and you will find the right path for your career. Okay, thank you to have a self-assessment. Yeah. And uh, 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 Patricia, maybe, or maybe can I ask Suti also, because I think you may have been also facing that. Um, do you encourage uh, young people to, to do internship, to have experience in company during their, their studies to, to, to ease after the recruitment process for, for companies? Uh, do you take interns at, uh, at, at Solvays? What is your policy on that and your uh, recommendation? Yeah, uh, in, in terms of the policy, we like, uh, the company like to get the good people come to work with us. And uh, this is not asking. So in fact, uh, we have open for the opportunity for the internship uh, come to work with us. And during you work with us, uh, we will give you some opportunity to learn. And to say, this is your opportunity within two or three months. And let's show with us. After you do it, you know, even the first time you did the job, next year the company can call you again. Uh, why don't you come to work with us? So uh, in terms of the policy, we are open. Uh, for the people who would like to come to work with us. So just ask us. So even they, you don't see any announcement or statement that company needed. You call, you ask, you propose yourself. Yeah, there, maybe there are to, there to go and ask because maybe it's key to have this experience. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, Patrice, mm, if you yes, want to... to uh, yes, we're always looking for uh, internships, especially in technical, in the technical skills engineering of engineering. Um, what I will recommend is to, if possible with your curriculum, to get four, five, six months uh, internship, because three months is very short. Uh, three months will give you some experience, but you will not learn that much from the company, and the company will not really be able to evaluate you as well. So um, a longer internship is better. And uh, we as companies are also trying to, uh, to build ties to uh, University in our domains, for example, I'm trying to work with uh, KMIT right now because they do uh, things in uh, acoustics and all this kind of thing, which I'm looking for. So we are also pushing as company relationship to the university to try to pick up the best students <laughs> as well before they are graduated uh, or to come for internship. Okay, so thank you very much. Well, you see, the, the, the we see that there are a lot of uh, benefits and interest maybe to, to work for European companies. So for that, uh, they, they encourage you uh, to, to go for uh, maybe European studies or to go for internship to, to there and, uh, and then to, to there also to be a candidate to, to, those, uh, to those companies. So, so don't hesitate. Uh, maybe now, uh, first I, I, I will thank my, my panelists, but uh, it's not finished for you because now we are going to have a maybe more straightforward discussion with our, with our uh, participants here. So if you have questions and uh, don't hesitate to, to raise it to them, uh, to us, I think it's a, a good moment to have this, uh, this discussion. For the Thai students, it's a, it's a good time to show you're not cringe eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, they can start easily by asking Thai. That's the moment of truth now. Ah. Oh, I'm learning. Bang Shu, my English is not perfect, but I will try. You know, say from say Peredona. Um, I read from internet. Sometimes uh, they are going to have the French um, film, F-I-L-M, film company, that they are going to shoot in Thailand. So when they, are, they plan to have that, do they have to contact uh, France Thai uh, Chamber 
or your embassy before or just agency or modeling, please? Um, producing for French uh, TV series and movies happen very often in Thailand, and they have their own uh, channels. I don't think they, they, they don't contact the Chamber for sure, but we have quite a few producing companies managed by French people here, <laughs> actually. Um, so I can, um, I, I know a few of them, I can personally uh, gi give you some, uh, some uh, advice. Um, they are running also, um, if you're looking at uh, uh, careers in acting and so on, uh, they are running a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of casting in a town in town, which is the main place for <laughs> where all the casting happens, town in town. So, uh, but uh, I, there are quite a few, so they, I don't, they don't contact us. At Dove, they contact the embassy, uh, but uh, because it's been uh, running for a few, for quite a number of years now, so they have their own channels, but uh, I would be happy to, to, to let you know a few names uh, of in this industry. Thank you, thank you, Papa. Any other question? Time to dare. Hi everyone. First of all, I have to say sorry, I am not good in English. But uh, I would like to ask about this. I am 40 years old. It is too old or too late to think about to work overseas. Oh, may I take this one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take this one. I, I will say to you that uh, the age is nothing. Forget it. First, it's up to how you learn and how you adapt. When you are too young, you have the reason that you are too young. When you are too old, you always have the reason that you are too old. So forget about the reason. Just do it. So I, I will say like this. If uh, you would like to wait for opportunity, you will never get it. Just look around you and forget about that. 40 years old, I would say that you have uh, more than 15 years of working, strong experience, right? You see many things. Just going out, going from what you are staying, uh, where you are staying today, and go to some more place that you would like to start. Okay, so I insist that it's not too old. Okay, this is what I would like to insist. I think everyone is agree. Yes, yeah. and I think you can be young with your own mindset and not be flexible and resilient. And you can be old with a young mindset, as, as uh, Ken Floyd was saying, and with a lot of resilience, flexibility, adaptability. So not a matter of age. The only way this is hard for the a little bit old is the, the memory to learn something new. Maybe it's hard, right? But don't worry about this. Today you can reach information easily as far as you know where they are. Okay, so this is it. I would like to add something because um, sometimes people worry too much about the age, right? But if we look back, um, I think we should enjoy the benefit that we get in each level of the age that we have, right? And as the age that you have at this moment, you already have a lot of experience and you might already um, facing a lot of challenges. So um, you already have a vaccine, right, in yourself when you have to face an, a new challenge in a new culture again. And based on my experience, most of the expat that has uh, is a Thai people that we um, transfer them to work in international country. Most of them always successful. Yeah. So um, just be confident. Yeah, and look forward and take action on that. Yeah. And, and you have a lot of change because most of the foreigners and Europeans have a lot of difficulty to give an age to Thai people. <laughs> so most of the time they will say they are you are younger than your age. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another question? Uh, here. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask because I didn't mean to, uh, I, I didn't plan to join this event, but I bring my daughter to study French here. And I saw that there's a study and career opportunity. So I, I wanted to ask uh, because yeah, I'm 40 years old too. And I tried to apply for a job here in Thailand and it's very difficult uh, because it's been 
more than 10 years that I didn't work. But uh, you mentioned earlier that um, you're looking for someone in hospitality. Do you think for me, after not working for 11 years, so long, is it possible for me to, to find something? So it's not directly mm. my, my sector, but I do believe so, yes, because hospitality is lacking so much of people in France now yeah. that they are willing to, uh, to give the chance to people who have not been working okay. uh, for a long time, uh, uh, especially if you had already had hospitality experience before. Yes. Uh -huh. um, there's one thing that uh, uh, in, in France and Europe I think we are quite understanding about is that uh, sometimes women can stop working for mm -hmm. educating their kids, so that happens, yeah. even if it happened less in France and maybe than in Europe, in Thailand. So I think it's as soon as you can, there are good reasons for you not to have been working for 10 years and you are motivated to go back to work in hospitality and food. I, th I think it's possible. I'm not saying it's easy, but I think it's possible. Maybe there, there's something you can we can add there. Um, I mentioned before the kind of team aspect, you know, like you recruit your team as part of that. If you have a team with only 30 year olds that are part of your team, sometimes, you know, maybe it lacks experience. No, sometimes maybe it, lack, it lacks maturity. You as a mother of a young child have yeah. taken responsibility and have taken on uh, those requirements. And I think that that is a skill in itself also, you know, and that makes you maybe a valuable addition to that team. So I think it should, it, it should be something that we promote and tell them, you know, like, I've been taking care of, of, of a young daughter. I know what it is to take care of guests. I know what it, take, what it means to take care of other people. And as a result, that's a skill that you can promote and you can be a, a valuable addition to, to such a team. So I think use what you've got, you know, and th that's definitely something that you can use. Uh -huh, because it's, I, I don't know if it's because here in Thailand, it's, it's very difficult. I've been trying and it's quite impossible for me to get a job here. So I'm, if there's a possibilities in France, uh -huh, because I do speak French uh -huh, and I do speak Chinese and I... I, I uh, think what is important also is the experience. So as you said, you've been working uh -huh. three year, 10 years. I, I heard a lot in uh, people sharing experience together on how to find a job here. They say sometimes the most important is find a job to find another job. Mm -hmm. Meaning that at some point, maybe you have to be flexible on the position you are going to choose or to accept for the first one because you need to, to go back to the, to, the, to the work field, let's say. Uh, so maybe be, be a bit flexible for this first one and after it will help you to, to go to the second I'm one. I'm trying to be flexible, <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> even no. in Thailand, even if I accept like a, a low salary, yeah. it's still very difficult. Huh? Yeah, so, uh, so that would be a first recommendation. And the second mm -hmm. one is uh, if you want also to be back on, uh, on track, mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, uh, studies or trainings or online trainings that are free. Sometimes it can help you also uh, to come back on uh, one field and to also add something on your CV for those years and saying, okay, now I have done that also this year. Meanwhile, you are looking for another opportunity. You can do those online trainings. I think now there are really big offers online that could be interesting for you. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll I'd try. I'd like to add that you, you obviously speak good English. Um, you will be speaking French. Uh -huh. so no, your French is really good. So, so this is a huge advantage in France as well. But um, uh, also, we also have always have companies in different mm -hmm. sector looking for uh, uh, for people speaking French in Thailand. So I will recommend send us a resume. I'm not saying we're going to find okay. a job. But I'll we I'll have a lot that. of companies uh -huh. looking for people at the French Chamber of Commerce, and we're happy to uh, to mediate and help. And you I do speak can. Chinese Mandarin. Uh -huh. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. So now, I, I, how, how come we cannot get a job? Right? So maybe we are not <laughs> going to start a job interview now. <laughs> Maybe let's take another question and then uh, and then we'll discuss uh, okay, more right. later. Thank okay, you. All right. uh, thank you. Do you have other questions? Um, hello to everyone. So I have a question that Kyle, I don't know. So I was have experience about the customer service right now, but I would like to get some suggestion that it is possible that I change the career path, like change the field of the work from the customer service to like more specific things. Yeah. Do you want to 
I think it is, is possible, but it's up to when you would like to start, right? Because um, opportunity is always available outside, but how you gonna reskill or upskill yourself to take, be able to take that, that opportunity is another chapter, okay. right? So um, it's up to yourself first that um, when you would like to be ready to step out of your comfort zone and taking the new challenge, yeah. Uh, may maybe I give some. Uh, you're working in customer service. Look downstream. You're working with customer, right? If you would like to be marketing, you can be, right? Upstream, if you like to be supply chain, you can as well. Logistic, you can as well. So if you like to go, maybe step just one step after you work, right? And then you can be, uh, you can change your job because you know customer, right? You know many things. Customer call to you, ask many things. You know what they require, right? So why not being sales, right? Being marketer, right? And after this, all the while, if you don't like, go up to be supply chain, logistic. Something we, oh, sorry, Patrice, do you? We've had a couple of people um, sadly leave us, but that, that's part of the game. Um, uh, and because of better opportunities, and that better opportunity was an Austrian company. And it's an Austrian company that they used to work for. So they work in the embassy, they consult them, they are um, advising them um, ab about their business here in Thailand. And then at some point, maybe they, they offer them a job or they go actively for it. But what they have is n market knowledge. They know something. They, they are valuable to that company because they already know how they operate, exactly what you said, Suti. And I think that's what you gotta think of when you do the application, when you look for what you're gonna wanna do next. Where do I have that knowledge and where do I add value? Because that's what the employer looks for. Yeah, I just wanted you to say that um, don't mention customer services as, as, as if it were a limited uh, thing. Uh, consider is that what we call in companies nowadays customer experience. And customer experience is key to all our companies. And uh, the people dealing with the customer on a daily basis, they are the one managing and being the front end for the customer experience and the image of the company. So this downstream, upstream or so, but it's already a very valuable thing you're doing for the company and that you can bloom from. So consider it this way as well. Maybe I would like to ask a question back with whether currently you are working for the company, right? Yes. Yeah, so I think a good start is you should start having the discussion with your managers on your development plan and then uh, share with them frankly about your career aspiration. That would be a good start for you to develop yourself further to the next career path. Okay. Thank you. I think that's a very good point to employ. A very, very good point, actually. Look look inside first before you go outside. Many companies offer a lot more than you think. And some, sometimes we should have the college to raise up our hand, right? Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm excited. Um, I would like to ask you about a uh, health career part. Um, I'm 36 years old dentist. I work as a pedodontist um, more than 10 years, and now I and my husband decide to move to Belgium. Uh, next week, we uh, will go to apply our visa as a student visa, and then after graduate, we plan to find a job and work and settle there. Uh, and I know that I have to learn Dutch. I have to complete a B2 level proficiency for apply for license and work. I know all the set, but uh, I just need to ask you two points. One, I need suggestion uh, because I have no experience in foreign country. Um, I'm going to Belgium, right? Um, like um, foreign people, uh, international people to work there. Is it possible or is it normal? And two, um, I concern about um, that like um, even I reached B2 proficiency, um, I'm not a native. Um, do you have any idea about uh, to blend in or to work? Something like that. Thank you. Oh, yes. So this one, uh, I think that I can help you. So uh, it seems to me that you will move to the, uh, to the Flemish area. Right? Yes. So that's why you have to learn Flemish. 
Uh, I cannot say that it's hard. It's quite hard, but you really? have to spend more time. You know, when you start, it's, it's very big. But Actually, after um, that, it will um, be Lauren, very small. Sorry. Right? Uh, and after a year, you can just pray with your language. So mm -hmm. forget about this. You just think that you have to invest time. You have today that uh, you, uh, you made decision that you will move. I would say congratulations. Oh. Start it. Don't be afraid. The success is up to you. Okay? So you move uh, to the area. You start by learning. That is a good point. After you be there, look around you. Look around your neighbors. Uh, see how they can do. If you like to go to town hall, go there. Ask them. They are willing to help you. Yeah? You need it. You have to go to town hall. The people can explain to you how to live in that area. And your neighbor. Your neighbor will help you. Right? And in the beginning, you have to learn many things, even the trash. You have to know even how to throw out the trash. Right? So know about this. And at the end, uh, continue back in case of emergency, what you have to do. Right? Think about this. How can I access to there? How you can use the public transport? Right? Know something about this and try to find the community. We have Thai community there, and they will help you. They know a lot. And this can help you later that, okay, how can I move from one to another? And even before you move, you can introduce yourself that I will move to stay there, only one in that area. Plenty of uh, Lisbon will come back to you. And after you are there, you start to connect with the others. Okay, you need someone to help you in the beginning because alone, not easy, right? So you need someone to help you to bring uh, like uh, your state, uh, bring you there after you'll be strong then you continue to look after. Yeah. So this is what I can talk. So if you, if you like, maybe we have some connection. Uh, we can bring you in. And then you can ask the other there. So that can help yes, you. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just to, well, the microphone is moving. Uh, think about the number of foreigners that you know around you in Thailand that who don't speak Thai. <coughs> think about it. So you can survive. It's a bit different, of course, but you can survive. <laughs> Hello. Uh, um, I'm now I'm working in the sustainable design and architecture field. Um, is it possible to find a job easier if I after I do the master degree in Europe? Or actually, the, uh, the master degree isn't that impo uh, important in Europe? I, I can I can try this one. Um, you, um, I think the master's degree is important in Europe. Uh, full stop. I think in in Europe we do look at this sort of qualification. We look at the bachelor degree and the master degree. Um, I, I don't think there's many Austrian companies, for example, in Austria, you know, architecture bureau um, uh, offices and so on, that um, uh, that would consider someone with only a bachelor degree? Was it a Thai university or was it an international uh, university? Thai university, but now cur currently I'm working in a UK firm in Thailand. Yeah. yeah, okay. I think that's, uh, you know, like with the masters, you take that extra step. With the masters in, uh, in Europe, you do take the extra step. Show the commitment and show the understanding. Working in a British company now uh, in, uh, in Thailand already gives you some good experience. But you're going to see, uh, then living in the, in, in the UK or living in, in, in Europe uh, and studying there, making the connections, understanding the culture will be an extra step and will definitely make it more valuable. And I think, you know, uh, leaving the country, uh, making such a big step will be slightly easier once you have the masters already. So I would, I would definitely encourage that. And I think employers are going to see you uh, as, as a higher profile candidate as a result. Yeah, just to add to that, uh, I totally agree. Um, that's one thing you have to consider uh, in France and quite a lot of other countries. When you have a bachelor degree, you're not an engineer. You're an engineer when you get a master degree. A mm -hmm. uh, bachelor degree is superior technician, highly high level, high level technician, or whatever you want to call it, but there's a big difference in terms even of uh, categorization in your employment. You're not an executive, period. Master degree, you are. So. Um, it's very important, I think, for uh, and anyway for French companies, if you want to be considered as an engineer, to have a master degree. Thank you. And, and maybe we can lead on from this. A nostrification means to have your degree uh, translated into the the, the country where you work. 
Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to work with a bachelor degree from Thailand, but I can say for sure that a master's degree in the country where you need where you work doesn't need nostrification. So you're not worried about this aspect anymore. And as a result, you have the qualification and there's no translation. And uh, it's sometimes it's hard for you, even with the Thai masters, to make it look the, the, the right qualification which you require for that job in, in Europe then. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, firstly, I would like to say I want to work abroad but my question is, as I am Thai, what is the strong point that the company will choose me instead of the, the native of that country? Uh, can you say like this? Uh, Thai culture is the advantage. You have to think like this, your kindness. The way that we, uh, we say that this is no problem, I can try. You accept, right? Thai people accept everything easily. Uh, of course, sometimes if you would like to be, uh, how can I say, achieve, uh, I talk about the, the success. You have to think about the priority, okay? So don't be afraid about your kindness. Don't be afraid about uh, Thai culture, but use it correctly, okay? Use it when it has to use. But uh, what you need to do is uh, have to be assertive. Uh, again, I come back to your uh, being professional. Know everything, why it's happened, when I have to do everything about this. And after you know this, don't be afraid. Yeah, You can do it. Don't care about, oh, I'm tired, how can I approach? What you have to do, you do it. Okay. Just think about this. Oh, shall I give my opinion? Do it. Am I afraid about that? No, no, no thing to be afraid. Yeah. So I if you ask that uh, for Thai people would like to work outside and uh, thinking about the barriers, don't focus at the barrier, focus over the barriers, okay? If not, you will stay just in front of the barrier. Look behind, okay? This is what I can help you, so. Maybe someone would yeah, like maybe to if give I can add, I think it's like if you consider why as a as a woman, because it's always a lot the, the, the sometimes the mindset. So I think you have just to trust your your expertise, your uh, talent, and you have to to really uh, how to say emphasize on that. But maybe as another argument, you would say in your mindset, your question would be why in European companies would be interested by Thai talents. I think as you know, multinationals are more and more interested to have a local managers, uh, if even if they have a, a branch in Thailand, they would be interested to have a Thai manager to manage their Thai branch. So that's why more and more French companies are looking to hire uh, young uh, local talents uh, to make sure that after they will be the managers of those countries and maybe after share their experience of the Asian market uh, back in uh, Europe. So I think also uh, that's uh, an argument why they, they, they would be interested. Yeah, I will totally agree with also with uh, what you've said just now. I mean, um, there's another point um, which is uh, kind of delicate to, to bring up, but um, Thailand is one of the country where we have the most women in high position in power in companies. There's a good reason for that. Um, so, uh, and we, as we hire all Thai people, men and women, but we know also the quality Thai women who've been studying here can bring to a team, and uh, that's something that is recognized, clearly. So I think uh, uh, when company wants to be more and more uh, on parity level for men and women, we are trying to bring a lot of uh, Thai women talents into company because of the quality they can bring. So be assertive again. You have high qualities that you don't even know, probably, <laughs> uh, that, but the companies, if they are smart, they will know. Yeah, I, I, I would like to add something. I think it's quite common that sometimes we think like um, we are Thai and we are uh, would like to apply to work abroad so they will be interested or not. But um, let's think it's in this way, another way that um, besides thinking and focusing just only the nationality, why don't we look at what are the things that the company is looking for and what are the things that we can make them feel confidence, right, that we would be the best fit to what they are looking for at that moment, right? And with the chance of the world that there will be non-boundary, 
right? So you are not competing just only the local people, but in the future, it's like a cross-border, right? That we need to compete and make our field be dominant and be competitive in the markets. So just look at the bigger pictures, find yourself and find a way to best fit to the organization. Yes. Thank you. There is a question here. There's always Thai food that, that you can bring to the company. There's Thai spice you can bring to the company. So don't forget that. Uh, that and will um, add a lot of benefit. Oh you know? yeah, <laughs> mention it in any interview. <laughs> and so mango they everyone's one of the competency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and mango sticky rice is very popular right now. So. Hi, um, I actually have the same question as the previous person. Like, how would you convince a French employer in France, in the mainland France? or even in Canada, Quebec, or a French-speaking country in general? Uh, as you already uh, give the answer to that question, my next question is, do you have any job website or job agency or job source in France? Would you recommend? Yeah. Well, I think each, each country has their own, uh, has their own uh, how to say uh, job uh, job platforms? Uh, so maybe if you want, I can give you uh, APEC or in France, uh, what other yeah, one? Do you speak French? Uh, uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. So APEC won't be very useful okay. uh, because in French. But uh, yes, uh, uh, we can try to. to yeah, to and I think also as you are all here, it's a good way to say that sometimes the best way to to make this this uh, this bridge to Europe would be first to apply for a company in here and say you are interested by European uh, career. And with this European company, you know here it can make your first step in. Then after with them, you, you, you move to Europe. So that could be also an another way, sometimes another path. But it also depends in what sector you're looking for. Um, so I don't know what you're looking for. Uh, I work in logistic sector. Like working in terminal in Ho Sume or Le Havre would be a good opportunity. Yeah. Okay, so if you work in logistics in terminals, I think you have a, a, a big French company uh, called the CMA CGM here that uh, is uh, pushing opportunities worldwide and in France. So that would be a good start as well. Uh, so we can we can put you in touch with them. We take the one in front and after we'll, we'll get to you, sorry. Oh, well, I have two questions. First, um, I've been looking for a job in LinkedIn. And the problem is um, my, my qualification is not match because uh, I just uh, graduated. I don't have enough um, uh, experience well most job require many years of uh, work experience or very specific field but my field of study is not really uh, in that business market and right now I'm planning to uh, apply for a PhD in Europe so I just wonder if after my graduation Will I have opportunity to work in any business sector or in any company that related to my field of study? Wait, can we just ask what is your field of study? Ah, uh, yeah. I study political science, um, specialized in sociology and anthropology. I can I can give it a go for the f for the first part when it comes to work experience because because that's I think that's a very generic question at the moment. 
uh, I've got friends and, and my niece at the moment, she's looking for a job actually in Austria. And she's complaining to me like, oh, wow, well, you know, I, I don't have much work experience yet. And they're all looking for work experience. And I understand that completely. And, and it, it is a, a real uh, sticking point. However, again, you know, if we go back to what the employer wants to see with the experience is that you have some done something before and that you are able to have the skills to carry something out. So if you have maybe done um, other employment, uh, vocational employment while you have been studying, um, um, other jobs uh, that, that maybe can show this sort of um, endurance, this sort of stamina that you stick with a job, uh, then, then use them as examples. Use them as examples to show that you have experience, maybe not directly related to the work, but the other one, and then you have to show that uh, you can learn quickly. So all of those things. But it's, it is a, a difficult point at the moment that we always look for someone with three, five years experience. How are they gonna get this experience <laughs> if they haven't had a job before? But that's what you gotta go for. Use your strengths to get there. The PhD, I will happily pass on to someone else. <laughs> no, but I, I think what is important, and we are getting back to it, the internships. I think really if you get the opportunity during your studies, and then if you are going to do a PhD, you will have a case study, I guess, or uh, an internship to do. I think this is key because most of the time they look for experience. You, you go and sell the things that you have done during your internship and show that you have been able to put your studies into concrete action. I think that's just what they, 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 they want to see. So um, my advice on that would be still there to apply for position in which they are asking for three to five. Uh, a year of experience because of course if you have the choice you will take someone with experience but most of the time it means you have budget for a junior right so if you have in front of you a junior that has had uh, internship or you show what you have studies that is concrete maybe even case studies during your studies etc that shows that you you know how to apply concretely what you have learned that uh, that is key and really during your PhD try to have this experience yeah, I think it's really a key because also, and now I will sell the chambers, but you know, finding a job is most of the time a matter of network. Uh, and this network, you'll get it by your internship, but also by your relations, ask your parents, ask your uncles. And I know you have very strong families in Thailand, ask them to take you for small jobs, uh, maybe during the weekend, during the holidays, but to, to help you have a first small experience. And I think this is key because it's also this network that will help you after to find the new position and find something else. And, and perseverance, you know, keep, keep trying. W w when, when we look at CVs, you know, uh, sometimes they don't fulfill exactly that criteria, but they are an interesting candidate. We invited them in for the interview, and that was with one of the, one of the people that we had just employed for my team, uh, where she had less than we required as an experience. I think we wanted three to five, and she had one and a half or something, but she was great. You know, she learned a lot in this one and a half years, and we took her. So uh, be aware that there is some more flexibility that sometimes it is at first sight. Mm, so it is possible that uh, if my experience is not match the uh, requirement, it's also possible to apply, right? Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know what the criteria on LinkedIn on, the, on this, but yeah. you can send them an email as well additionally. Show that you want the job, you know. That will show something to the employer. Mm, thank you. Me uh, yeah, maybe the, the last after, we'll take the last question just after. Yeah, my, my last question is um, before, the question before, you t you were talking about um, women and mindset stuff, right? As Thai woman, I am asking for other Thai women who, who want, wants to have opportunity in Europe company or working abroad. Uh, how would you ensure that we as Thai women will not have to face the problem that they have racist or uh, kind of stereotype that Thai woman is kind of sex worker. Uh, I, I wish Haradi is not to answer the question, but just to give you example, the real example. Uh, I had uh, my uh, woman colleague uh, who work in Belgium and they are well accepted. Right, it's not up to the elder, but it's ourselves, uh, how we show, right? It's normal that people in the first time, they don't know you, they would like to see you. So uh, be, be, be persistent, continue to do what you are doing, and the elder will make decision on that perfection. But just to guarantee you that I had many of our Thai 
uh, woman working in Belgium. They're happy. And today, they're still working there. Okay. At least uh, I, I answer by having someone to give you a... I, I would like to add something as well, right? Um, in the multinational company, and now it's also expand to all the local company as well. They will have the word called fair and respect at work, yeah, where everyone has been, you know, uh, educated and treats individual with the respect, whether you are the woman, which nationalities, or any kind of uh, religious. So um, there won't be anyone that need to be a kind of uh, sufferings from the harassments and there will be no tolerance on that. So please be assured that at least majorities of the company has a well built this kind of the opinions and also the perspective toward the way they manage organization. And uh, I agree that it's also up to the way that we interact with the people as well, right? Yeah. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. Maybe we can take a, a, a last question. Uh, thank you, you have been very, uh, Courageous in asking questions, very interesting. Yeah, Thanks. it's it's direct and it's fine. Yeah, we open for the any questions. Oh, good afternoon, and thank you for your insight. It's very helpful for me. I just want to ask a question. I will be doing a master degree in Italy this fall, but the thing that concerns me is that job market in Italy is quite small, and I can speak French, so I want to say, is it possible for me to look for a job in France with the master degree from Italy? So you speak Italian? No. So, so, but you'll do the master, the master degree in English in Italy? In English in Italy, okay. yes. Um, for working in France, um, speaking French is a plus. But um, you, can, uh, you can also start with speaking very little French in France. And because you will be totally surrounded by French-speaking people all day at work, outside, you, will ca you probably will catch your French quite quite fast. Um, we don't speak English in French in this room, okay. to be clear. So, <laughs> and I'm sure you'll pick up Italian in three years in Italy as well. And Italian is very close to French as a language. So, um, Of course it's possible. It will be a bit more difficult because you will not master the language at first. But we have multinationals in France looking for people speaking several languages. So yes, I don't know, wha what are you studying in your master? Political science. Okay, so um, I really it's not really my domain. <laughs> I have no idea, but yeah. Maybe there are lots of uh, headquarters of international companies also uh, that are in uh, in uh, in uh, maybe uh, all capitals in Europe that could recruit people speaking English uh, in France or abroad. So it, it depends on the job. If you are in an international position working for, uh, I don't know, any uh, international uh, representation, you. I think uh, you, you can find even if you don't speak the local language. What do you, what do you think, uh, Stefan? Uh, where are you going to study in Italy? Uh, Bologna. Uh, Bologna. Great university town. Um, Florence is not very far. There's lots of international organizations in Florence, actually. And if you study political science, they could be interesting to you. Uh, at the same time, um, maybe there's opportunities in Rome. Also, again, lots of international organizations. Political science, consultancy is some sometimes something that people go into. There's big international consultancies. But get some, get some experience also, internship, you know. Uh, political science is something where you need to show that you have applied your knowledge to something in a work environment. If it stays in the theoretical field, it is really difficult for employers to see how you will use that um, practically. So get some work experience while, you, while you're in Italy, and then I'm sure you're set for opportunities in Europe. Thank you so much. Thank you. So maybe now it's it's time to to resume, but uh, we are all around. So if you have uh, remaining uh, questions, maybe don't hesitate to to come and see us after. Maybe time for me to to thank uh, Alliance Française uh, and all the EU organization to have uh, uh, helped us to uh, and put in, in place this uh, this panel. Uh, thank you very much uh, to all the the panelists and to all the participants and especially for the further questions and uh, and so have a, a good day and have a good uh, career in Europe or in Europe uh, European companies thank you very much bye
Thank you. Thanks for coming today. Uh, merci, uh, Kun uh, Justine. Thank you, Kun Patrice. Thank you, Kun Sutishai. Thank you, Kun Ploitaptin. And thank you, Kun Stefan, uh, for joining us today. Uh, the conferences will be uh, still available online, so uh, don't hesitate to come back on the website of the uh, Alliance Francaise. Uh, we're having another event, European event, on the 11th of June. So stay tuned if you want to join us. This event will be dedicated to the global challenges such as climate change, biodiversity, and uh, the ocean's uh, diversity. So let's keep in touch, and you're welcome anytime at Alliance Francaise. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much.